in St. Augustine, Florida, the oldest city in the country. So I bought a museum just four or five days ago, signed the lease on this building, and then I've got 27 days left to get this place ready. So it's going to be a hands-on interactive children's museum for children and families, so school groups, families with children that come and visit here. And keep in mind, we have 7 million visitors a year coming through the town to visit here. So I am on my way down to the museum. I'm going to take the long way around. I want to show you around this beautiful town, kind of let you experience it a little bit as we go around and then make my way down to the museum, kind of show you what, what's going to happen there. So I'm walking right now. This is the Huguenot Cemetery that I'm headed to right now, right outside the city gate of St. Augustine. Okay, it's a beautiful town. I absolutely love it. If you haven't visited here, please make sure that you come do it. Fantastic little town. Get to show you around a little bit. So here we go. Right across the street from me is Castillo de San Marcos. That is the oldest masonry fort in the United States. And I'm just outside the city gate here. Now the city gate was the only entrance point into the city. When it was built in 1808, this made this a walled in presidio. So prior to building this gate, there was a palm log wall and some other structures here. But these, this, this set of gates here, this is made out of coquina. That's the same substance that the fort is made out of. Now, coquina is a naturally formed rock. What happens is tiny seashells settle down to the bottom of the ocean floor. And after hundreds and hundreds of years, that pressure forms them into a rock. They found that rock over on the Anastasia Island. They used it to build a fort out of The fort is right over here. Okay. This is the Castillo de San Marcos. I'm going to take you over here first because just outside of the city gate is this really cool cemetery. It's called the Huguenot Cemetery. Now, St. Augustine was a Spanish town. And in that time period, if you were Spanish, you were going to be Catholic. So over in the cemetery is where the Protestants were buried. So if you weren't Catholic, you couldn't be buried inside the city limits. Okay, so this cemetery right here was opened in 1821 during the yellow fever epidemic. There was a bad virus, went through St. Augustine, killed a lot of people. They opened the cemetery in 1821 and they closed it in 1884. So this gravesite that you see right here, little one that looks like a chess piece just past the fence there, that is the gravesite of Judge Stickney. And Judge Stickney is no longer buried there. Okay, and you see he passed away while well, he was on a trip up in DC. And when he passed away, he was interred here. And his daughters, who were underage at the time, they went to live with one of his friends up in the DC, Maryland area. They lived with him until he passed away. Well, when he passed away, they, the daughters decided that they wanted their father buried with his best friend who had taken care of them after his passing. So they had his body reinterred up there in D.C. There's a great ghost story that we uh, sometimes tell. We don't often tell it, uh, but a lot of the other ghost tours here in town, they tell the story of Judge Stickney. And when they... Uh, called in Gravedigger Wells to dig up his body. He was uh, digging up the coffin and it was a hot summer day. So he went and had his lunch and took a nap over there in the corner in the shade. And when he woke up, he saw some hooligans over there messing with the grave and they were waving the hands around, they said, and you know, just messing with the body. But they stole Judge Stickney's gold teeth. And ever since then, people say that they've seen Judge Stickney roaming around, looking down on the ground, looking for those gold teeth. This is the Huguenot Cemetery. There are so many important figures in St. Augustine's history buried here. This is open just at the time when St. Augustine became a U.S. territory. We're not a state yet. Well, Florida became a, 
uh, U.S. territory in 18, uh, 1821. We didn't become a state until 1845. So we're going to take a little walk around town here on our way down to the museum. It's going to be called the Treasure Chest. It is a hands-on interactive children's museum. People can come in with their families, school groups can come in, and visit, learn about what it was like to be a child here in St. Augustine. The rest of the town, they talk about what you did as a soldier, what you did as an adult, but we want to show kids what they would have been doing here in St. Augustine, okay? Living as a child here, so I'm going to take you on a little tour here, show you, a little, show you around town on my way down to the museum so that I can start getting some stuff ready. So here we go. We're going to walk down St. George Street for a few minutes here. And I'm going to take you on some of the side streets too because St. Augustine is a lot more than just what the people see here when they come and visit. Typically when, when visitors come in here, they're walking down St. George Street and this is about the only thing that they see. I don't know, going over to the Ford or taking a, a trolley tour. Now the trolley tours are great. Train tours are great. But there are a lot of other ways to get around town too. So I want to show you some of those as well as we walk along. Coming up over here on our right hand side yes, is the oldest wooden schoolhouse. Now the schoolhouse was built sometime between 1760 and 1763. It's made out of red cedar and cypress and it's put together with handmade nails and wooden pegs. And you'll see this anchor over here to the right of the schoolhouse. Now that anchor was put there in the 1930s and there was a strong hurricane getting ready to come through, so they decided that they wanted to anchor the building down. There's a professor's wife up there. Now at that time, when this was a schoolhouse, the professor had to be male, okay? That's their schoolhouse gift shop. So inside of the schoolhouse gift shop, they have our brand new children's activities book available. So we just uh, produced a, an activity book that has all kinds of coloring pages and different puzzles and games. There's Sudoku and word searches and word scrambles and crossword puzzles and all sorts of things like that in there. So this is the grist mill. So the grist mill, this wheel, is powered by an artesian well back then. Today, they have a pump that pumps the water up, but it was powered by an artesian well that would pump water up through that pipe on the left-hand side goes up into that trough and then it gets caught in pockets on the side of the wheel here. You'll see that spinning around, okay? It gets caught in those little pockets and that turns the wheel, which turns gears on the inside of the building, which turn these great big stones. There used to be one sitting out here, right in front of the grist mill. And those stones would grind up corn and grain into meals so that they can make flour and bread and tortillas and different stuff like that. So that is the grist mill. Another little cute little alleyway over there and has a bunch of neat shops in there. The bath and candle shop. Speaking of candles, that's one of the things that we'll be doing at the Treasure Chest Museum, okay? So these are our friends at Lickit here. We're going to actually have candle dipping where the kids will come in and make their own candles and be able to take it home with them. It's going to be a $10 museum, okay? For 10 bucks, you can come in, make a candle, and take it home with you. Then we're also going to have some candle making classes and things like that. So we have a lot of cool stuff going on here. This right here, this is the Gallegos house. Now, this is a typical colonial family home back in the 1740s, okay? So you typically lived in a one room house, most soldiers would have lived in a one-room house like this, okay? This is the Gomez house. So you typically lived in a house just like this. This is, a, this is not a one-bedroom, but a one-room house. So a family of five, husband, wife, and three children lived in this house, and they also ran a small store out of the house as well. They had a little bit of storage space up there in the top, but you did all of your activities outside in the garden. But this house, the Gallegos house, this was the home of an artillery sergeant. So he ran one of the cannon crews over at the fort. Being a person of means, he had a little bit more money 
and built him a larger house. So they had a two-room tabby house. So in one room is where all of the family slept. They slept on little mats called sofas. It's a canvas mat that is stuffed with straw. And we're gonna take some of those mats and we're gonna put them in our museum and that's where the kids are gonna sit. And I just bought these beautiful church benches, uh, church pews, and we are refinishing them right now. And that's where the adults will sit. The kids will come in, they'll grab a sofa, they'll sit down on the floor. One of our guides will talk to them about the history of St. Augustine for just a minute or two. And then we're gonna get into the, what they would have been doing as a child here in St. Augustine. I wanna show you this place real quick. This is boom, the Salcedo House. The Salcedo House was originally built in 1760, okay? It was the home of Jose Salcedo. He was another artillery sergeant in the Spanish Army. Now it's located directly above Whetstone Chocolates. That's my apartment right up there, okay? So imagine all of the thousands of people that come to St. Augustine every day. Take a look there, man, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. So being able to sit up on that balcony and just people watch, one of my favorite activities and any guests that I have come in, they stay there and they just absolutely love it. Uh, but that is the Salcedo house, okay? So, a little bit of information about the Salcedo house after Great Britain returned to Florida, uh, returned Florida to Spain in 1784. Jose Salcedo arrived from Havana to serve at the Castillo. In 1784, he bought this property, a two-story Coquina house, which had been replaced, which had replaced an earlier deteriorated, uninhabitable building. He died, then years later, his widow returned to Cuba. In 1796, General Jorge Basso, a black military leader who fought in the Haitian Revolution, rented this house. So Haitian General Basso, General Basso lived here in this house, okay? It is so cool to live in a historic building. Uh, the house that I actually live in now, wow, that's a beautiful shot there, dude. Damn, that's freaking fantastic. Um, yeah. So I'm going to get back up there and change the flag. We had that one up there for Memorial Day. Thanks to Allegiance Flags for that flag there. And my buddy Stephen Sanders at Bearded Freedom. So he's a buddy of mine. He uh, works with us. And he goes around and replaces torn and tattered flags. And when I met Stephen, he was in a wheelchair. Ah, i got to show you this one right here. This is another beautiful building here. This is Panama Hats. This is the Arribas house, but they always have such beautiful flowers growing up on their balcony. And Tony takes such great care of them. So many people stand out here and take pictures of this house. We actually have it on our map that's on the back of our, shows you all of the main streets here in town. Um, right over here, these are friends at Ben's Pretzels. And Mimi's Crepes. So if you come here, they've got the best pretzels in town. There's another pretzel shop here, but Ben's has the best pretzels. So come here, you want a snack, Ben's Pretzels is a spot to go. Kind of walk around here a little bit and show you a little bit more of the town. So right here, our friends over at Ben's Pretzels and that little ice cream shop that I showed you a minute ago, Lick It, they are opening a new concept called Whips Waffles. It'll be open pretty soon. I don't know how soon. Everybody's definition of soon is a little bit different. This is going to be home of Whips Waffles, so they can make waffles and fresh whipped cream and stuff like that. So it's going to be a great little spot here. I'm going to show you something different here. This is the Oliveros house. Now, this is home to Flagler's Legacy. Flagler's Legacy is where you can purchase um, different uh, T-shirts and postcards and different things like that, sweatshirts and so forth from Flagler College. But it is also where you book your tour for Flagler College. You can take a tour of... Uh, the old Ponce de Leon Hotel that was built by Henry Flagler. So, but I want to show you something really cool here on this building, and that is right here. So this building is made out of coquina, the same substance that we talked about earlier. Uh, coquina is a naturally formed rock. The tiny seashells settle down on the bottom of the ocean, and after hundreds and hundreds of years, the pressure forms them into a rock. So if you take a close look there, it has thousands and thousands of tiny little shells. Well. Because coquina is very porous, because of all the tiny spaces in between the shells, they would leak. So what they would do is make a plaster called tabby. They would make that with oyster shells, lime, sand, and water. This is the Flagler Legacy shop here. It was built in 1798. 
1798. St. Augustine is the oldest city in the United States, the oldest continually occupied city of European descent here in the United States. So, my buddy Kushney lives right up there. This is the Benet house. So this is another two-story house. Now, Spanish, when they built their houses, they built them all as a one-story, single-story house. But when the British came in in 1763, they had nearly twice as many soldiers as the Spanish did. And they needed more space, so they added second floors to most of the buildings here. And when the Spanish come back in in 1784, they have all, all this extra space now. So the Benet house there has uh, Teddy's ice cream down on the bottom and then a residence upstairs. So there are very, very few people that actually live down in the historic district. We're fortunate to be a couple of them. This is the Florida Cracker Cafe. It's a great little restaurant. Uh, they're open about four days a week right now. They're still having trouble hiring people, getting people uh, to, to work. I've been very fortunate, man. I've been very, very fortunate. Had a great staff. We were actually overstaffed all year, and very few businesses have had that luxury, but I was overstaffed all year, so I was able to focus on a lot of different projects, get some things done, and create new projects and, and new income sources for other people. So this is a great shop called Faux Paws. Faux Paws is a place for dog lovers. And my friend Lynn Small and her husband Mark, they own this place. They've got uh, other locations in Charleston, and I believe one up in Tennessee. They've got a location over in Tampa as well. Um, but it's a place for dog lovers. But another neat thing, take a look at this. Another coquina building, and then covered over with the tabby plaster. Now tabby is a man-made substance. It's made up with oyster shells, lime, sand, and water. What they do, would do is crush up oyster shells and burn them. That gave them lime. They would take that lime and mix it in with sand and water, and that gave them the tabby plaster that they needed to weatherproof their houses. This is Queen Isabella's garden. It's a beautiful garden. Hardly ever gets used, okay? Oh, look, here's one of our friendly squirrels. Squirrel's gone wild, okay? Take a look at him there. He just wants to look at y'all and say hi. What's up, buddy? Yeah. How you doing today? He's out here waiting for the dog treats to start coming out. I'm sure they feed him some nuts and stuff as well. All right, he decided to move on and go on on the tour like we should be doing. So this is, across the street, is the Columbia Restaurant. Now the Columbia's been around since 1905. You get here, and you wanna to go to the Columbia, one of my suggestions is to try their 1905 salad. Delicious salad, one of the best things on their menu. They started out over in Ybor City, over in Tampa. If you're familiar with, with Tampa, Ybor City is kind of the cigar district. So a lot of the uh, Hispanic uh, community settled in there. They opened cigar shops and did cigar rolling and things like that. Obviously, they're gonna have great places to eat. So the Columbia here started out over in Tampa. They have locations in Tampa, St. Pete, Celebration, and then here in St. Augustine. Cafe Hidalgo just passed by as well. That is a great gelato and sandwich shop. Nice little courtyard. Let's walk back here in the courtyard because I'm going to show you some of that as well. So look at this beautiful courtyard. They've been just cleaning up back here. Also public restrooms. So they have tables that sit out here. You can sit out here and just enjoy a nice little gelato, an Italian sandwich, paninis, good coffee. Well, it looks like their coffee machine's out of order. Oh man, what a bummer. Now I would want to get that fixed real quick because they do have great coffees. Then upstairs is a uh, bar called Sangria's and they often have live music up there as well. So great little spot. Right across the street is a really cool spot called the Medieval Torture Museum. So I'll show you some of the figures that are out there. So upstairs is this museum where they talk about medieval torture devices and techniques that they used to torture their enemies. So that's the Medieval Torture Museum there. I'm going to walk down here to Treasury Street because I want to show you one of my 
favorite spots here, a very special spot for us because the Pena Peck House is uh, home of the Women's Exchange here in St. Augustine. Some of the uh, women who take care of this city and have put a lot of love and thought and care into the city and they've got, it's a beautiful wedding venue. They've got a beautiful courtyard and it's right next to the Basilica Cathedral, which we'll talk about in a few minutes here. There's a world's most famous taffy. So they've got a taffy pulling machine right over here. Oh, look at that. They're hiring too. Want a fun job? Check it out and come learn how to make taffy. They've got it, that along with cotton candy. Got some great flavors in there. And this is Taco Shop, a very popular spot. So if you come here to St. Augustine, want to visit Taco Shop. Great, great food in there. Get the flying saucer. Get the flying saucer. It's my favorite item on their menu. And then right over here is Prohibition Kitchen, a really popular spot for live music and drinks. Food there is pretty good as well. It's not one of my favorites in town, but you want to see our top five favorite restaurants in town, check out our YouTube channel. We just released a video last month about our top five favorite restaurants here in town. So you can check that out. We'll be coming out with our top five favorite free things to do. And then of course, right after that is gonna be our favorite things to do with families here in St. Augustine. So for children and families is what we focus on because that's what I've done for the last 34 years is providing guided tours for school groups. Oh, here, here we go, here we go, look at this. So St. Augustine is a very, very pet friendly town, probably one of the most pet friendly towns in the Southeast, maybe one of the most pet friendly towns in the country. But I'm coming up here on the Pena Pet House. This is a really cool spot because this is another original building. It's not been rebuilt or reconstructed. It was built around 1750. And this was the home of the Spanish Royal Treasurer. So let's walk down here real quick towards Treasury Street because it's one of my favorite streets. And we'll come back here and talk about the home of the Spanish Royal Treasurer, the Pena Pet House. But Paint, Treasury Street is the narrowest street in the United States. Okay, it's only about seven or eight feet wide. I think it's seven feet wide. You can stretch your arms out from one side to the other and almost touch the other side. Two of you get together, you can definitely do it. But it leads out to the bayfront. So when the ships arrived and Spanish soldiers got paid once a year, that pay would arrive on a ship and then they had to get it down here to the treasury house. Well, you don't want any large forces being able to get down here. So they made this street only seven feet wide. They're gonna to have to hand carry that because a carriage, horses aren't gonna be able to get down here, but also no large troops are gonna be able to get down here to be able to attack and steal it. If you're only getting paid once a year, you wanna make sure that that dude is protected. So that's the Pena Peck House that we just passed by. i show you Treasury Street. We'll walk out here on the Bayfront and then go and walk along the plaza and over to the treasure chest, our new museum. Get to show you that and what we have planned for it. Some really, really cool concepts going to go in there, hands-on activities for children and families to be able to figure out what they did here in St. Augustine as a child. And that's, to me, that's really important because the kids have a hard time relating to battles and illnesses and stuff like that because they've never done that kind of stuff. But they're going to learn skills and things that they can enjoy. So this is... Treasury Street here. So you see what I'm talking about? It's very, very narrow here. And as you get down here, it's even narrower. So obviously, back behind me there, that area had been widened over the years. This is Treasury Street. It leads out here to the Bayfront. So your pay ship would have docked right out here. They carry the pay for the soldiers down this street, down to the Pena Peck House, the home of the Spanish Royal Treasurer. Ah, you guys are going to get to see the Bridge of Lions. So we just launched our new scavenger hunt as well, and that's called the Key to the City Scavenger Hunt. A really, really cool, interactive, fun scavenger hunt that you can do here in St. Augustine. And one of the questions on it is, counting the teeth on the lions at the Bridge of Lions. Okay? So this is the Bridge of Lions over here leads over to Anastasia Island.
this is going to be the site of a new restaurant in here that is owned by the company that owns River and Fort, another one of the top restaurants here in town, just back behind me. And then coming up over here, oh, I'm going to take you in their beautiful courtyard because I absolutely love it. This is Harry Seafood. Okay. It's a New Orleans style seafood, Cajun style seafood anyway. Uh, but excellent. They've got a beautiful courtyard, great outdoor dining. And that's one of the things that we love the most is being able to dine outside here in St. Augustine. So beautiful gardens, beautiful courtyards, great food, great service. Let's take a peek inside of Harry's here. There's their menu. So through this gate right here, it's one of the most beautiful courtyards in town. There are a lot of beautiful courtyards, but Harry's here, man, they're just packed all the time. You might remember from some of our hurricane coverage back in October and November, we had two hurricanes hit here within about 30, 40 days of each other. Um, we actually walked through that garden, through that courtyard there. It's all flooded in there, but I am walking down to the town plaza, but this is the Bridge of Lions over here on this side, right next to our city marina. Another great restaurant here that we love is the Casa Reina. Casa Reina, Taqueria and Tequila Bar. Great, great food there. My favorite menu item there, because I'm sure y'all want to know what I love to eat. That is the Mexican sushi there. And their flan, if you like flan, one of the best that I've ever had. So. I've got a buddy Manny in Orlando. He makes a great flan, but this one here, I would rate right up there with his. So, uh, if you come here to St. Augustine, visit the Casa Reina as well. So another question on our scavenger hunt is about Ponce de Leon and this statue right here. This is a statue of Ponce de Leon. They say he was four feet, 11 inches tall. And he's pointing to the north up at the Fountain of Youth where they say that he landed. Now, we now know that he did not land there, but uh, he came in search of this legendary fountain that he had heard of from the Native Americans at the village of Saloy. So we're gonna zip across here to the town plaza real quick. Take you on a quick tour through here and then I've gotta get over to the treasure chest and start getting to work on it. We're gonna be doing a lot of live streaming here and on our other platforms so that you can kind of see the progress of it and make sure that we make it. So from 1605 to 1765, there's still a guardhouse and a watchtower. And then under British rule, it became a market and became then known as the slave market. Now, there were some slaves traded here in St. Augustine, unfortunately. And if, if they were traded, some of them were, they were considered property of the Spanish government. So this is a town plaza here. All Spanish towns were built around a town plaza or town square. If you didn't have a well on your property, you came down to one of the public wells. So this is one of the public wells here. And then another one of my favorite little streets over here, under that archway, that is Avali Street. Avali Street is the oldest street in the oldest city in the United States. It is home to the Spanish military hospital. So now during the summer, Every Thursday night, they hold free concerts out here on the town plaza, and all the people gather out here in the grass. They have a band up there on the, on the gazebo, and then these are Civil War era cannons here. Take a look at this cannon. This is a Civil War era cannon right here. Also on our scavenger hunt, the key to the city scavenger hunt. So if you're coming here to St. Augustine or you know people that live here, be sure to have them check out that scavenger hunt because even the people that live here, they're going to learn a lot on this scavenger hunt as well. So a whole lot of fun, very interactive. You do it on your phone, so you, you purchase it, you download it, and then you're able to do it on the phone. And we're going to have monthly prizes as well. So we're going to take our leaderboard and take all of the points that are uh, earned there, and then we will give out prizes. 
and I have sponsors that are going to donate prizes. We will go and buy prizes as well. Uh, one of my ideas in a few months is to start giving away uh, game, gaming systems. So you're looking for a PS5 or an Xbox X or Oculus and stuff like that. As we get more people going and playing it every month, then the prizes will get bigger and bigger. We're going to start out with a $200 cash prize on the key to the city scavenger hunt. So this building right over here, this is really cool. This is the Government House Museum. Now this was home to the territorial governor of East Florida. Okay, It's now a museum, the Government House Museum. It's uh, run by the University of Florida Historic Preservation Department. It's a beautiful museum. They have exhibits that change out frequently. Uh, most recently there was a, a great exhibit uh, art exhibit in there and by going and looking at the art that's been painted about St. Augustine we were able to learn so much history and about what the buildings look like back in the day so it was really really cool to see that so the Plaza de la Constitución this the town plaza here as I mentioned all Spanish towns were built around the town plaza but this is the oldest public space in America it was laid out in 1573 okay also, this is really, oh, you'll hear the bells there. So, all Spanish towns were built around the town plaza, and for the Spanish, the most important feature on the town plaza was the Catholic Church. And this is the Basilica Cathedral here. So the bells that you heard there, those were from the Episcopal Church. But they have services going on today, so I can't take you into the cathedral, but this was the Catholic Church. And like I said, that was the most important feature for the Spanish was the Catholic Church. Religion played a very big part in society back then, as it does today. But the religion was why you went to war, okay? So we're going to uh, walk down here towards Flagler College. This is the old Ponce de Leon Hotel built by Henry Flagler. He actually owned three hotels here in St. Augustine. He only built two of them, okay? The third one he bought from a friend of his who tried to compete with him and went bankrupt and wasn't even able to get his hotel open and fully functional. So Henry Flagler bought it for pennies on the dollar and he had three hotels on the, all on the same corner. But his pride and joy was the Ponce de Leon Hotel. This was the first hotel in the United States with all electric lights. The Del Rey out in uh, San Diego got lights a couple months after. But, and it also had electric lights three years before the White House. Three years before the White House. So the, the round smokestack that you see just to the right there, that is an Edison Dynamo. And that supplied all of the electricity for Henry Flagler's hotel. Now, when he opened the hotel, electric lights were so new that people didn't want to turn on the light switches. So you had to hire staff just to turn on the light switches for them. So you wanted your light on. You sent a message down to the front desk and they sent somebody up to come and turn on the lights. Can you imagine having to get somebody to come and turn on your lights because you're afraid of them? That's how new they were. People weren't familiar with them. Used to lighting candles. Speaking of candles, we're going to have a candle dipping station over at the Treasure Chest Museum. We've got 27 more days to get this museum open, so it's going to take a lot of work. But I've got a great team behind me that helps me get all of these things done and you know what they're all partners with me okay I don't just start things to make money for myself I do it to help others and that's my goal in life I've been on a 12 and a half year mission to make the world a better place every single day and I've been able to accomplish that because of the great team that I have with me they love working with us they don't work for me they work with me okay so I'm gonna take a quick walk here into Flagler College because I want you to see the uh, Tiffany stained glass windows here. Absolutely beautiful. So Lewis Comfort Tiffany of Tiffany Glass designed these windows for Mr. Flagler. It's the largest private collection of Tiffany glass in the world. So let's go over here real quick. Let you take a look. This was the mining hall. So it cost you about $14 a night to stay here at the Ponce Leon Hotel back then. You'll see that as a Dynamo over there. And that included your three meals a day. Now, here's the catch. 
You couldn't stay for just one or two nights. You had to stay for the entire winter season, lasted about three months. You had to be on the New York Social Register to be able to stay here. It was only for the rich and famous. So he built a hotel right across the street uh, called the Alcazar, and that was more for entertainment. So we'll, we'll take you on a tour there sometime as well. Uh, that also is featured on the, yeah, that glass is amazing. Thanks, Julia. So I want to show you an up close view of one of the glass windows here. And then I got to get over the treasure chest and get to work, especially now that I know Julia's watching. So this right here, take a look at this. So those windows up there, they all look like this on the inside. So you can take a tour here at Flagler College. I showed you the Flagler Legacy Shop earlier. So you can be able to see this and see some of this Tiffany stained glass inside of there. It's absolutely gorgeous. And that is still the dining hall for the students today. So your horse and buggy pulled through right behind me, okay? Pulled you right up here, they drop you off, and then you come and check in to the beautiful Ponce de Leon Hotel. Check this out. This is so cool, man. So cool. And can you imagine going to school here today? So you came in and you checked in here at the Ponce de Leon Hotel, and then they escort you up the stairs to your room here, okay? This is so cool. Now, I'm not going to go all the way in because I got work to do, but this is the lobby. Actually, you know what? We're going to go all the way in. Why not? So this is the lobby of the Ponce de Leon Hotel. So the, while you're getting checked in, the bellman carried your bags from the horse and buggy. Check this out right here. Check out that dome, okay? Man, this is so cool. It's still around here today. Look at the columns. They're all hand carved. This floor is absolutely amazing. But you know what they did? They built in flaws into the floor. So when people came and told Mr. Flagler, oh man, you've got the perfect place, he would come over and point out, nope, there's a flaw here. See this? This isn't right. This shouldn't be there. Bucks for the tour. Uh, this is just, look at this. So cool. Now, let's take a walk over to Spanish Street, one of the most special streets in St. Augustine. Not just because it's the home of the treasure chest, but this was in the Menorcan Quarter. So the Spanish claimed this area for Spain in 1513. They're here up until 1763. So for about 250 years, we're under Spanish rule. And then it's turned over to the British in 1763. The British are here for 21 years. In 1784, we become a Spanish territory again. So from 1784 up until 1821, when we become a U.S. territory, it's back under Spanish rule. But in between there, during the British period, there's a group of people called the Menorcans. They came over as indentured servants with Dr. Turnbull. He brought about 1,200 of them here to uh, St. Augustine. They picked up supplies, and then they established a colony down in New Smyrna. It was an indigo plantation. So they came over as indentured servants. They're supposed to work for him for about six years and then be given their freedom where they can start a new life for their family here in the new world. Well, the indigo plantation struggles. It actually fails. The Menorcans, they marched for 70 miles, walked 70 miles through the Florida swamp to get here to St. Augustine, they petitioned the British governor at the time, Governor Tonin, said, hey, hey man, we need some help. We need a place to, to live, to survive. This colony, Dr. Turnbull didn't, didn't provide us what we needed, and therefore, we can't survive there anymore. He grants them asylum, and they are allowed to move into the dilapidated houses in what is now known as the Menorcan Quarter, the historic district here in St. Augustine. So, it is really, really cool to be able to have a place here, and we're going to feature the Menorcan heritage of the citizens of St. Augustine in our new museum called the Treasure Chest. So we have the Treasure Chest Museum, we have Sea America Tours, 
and then also the key to the city scavenger hunt. So I'm really, really proud of that scavenger hunt and the way it's turned out. So I hope that everybody will be able to come and check it out. Tell your friends that have kids to come and check it out. We're gonna have candle dipping. We're gonna have uh, corn grinding. We're going to have some social media spots, of course. You know, hey, we're gonna have those. We gotta have that Instagram moment. We're going to have some stations where they use a pump drill, where they uh, use a mortal, a mortar and pestle to grind up corn. You would have to do that. Remember we talked about that earlier with the grist mill. Well, you had to be able to do that by hand at your house as well, okay? The grist mill is gonna be more the commercial side. So we're coming up now on the Treasure Chest Museum. I'm gonna take you inside real quick. There's nothing in there right now except some tools. Getting ready to redo the floors and paint it. But this is a spot. It's located at 76 Spanish Street. Like I said, one of the most beautiful streets in town. And then another one of our tours here, the Night Watchman Ghost Tour, okay? So we tell the stories from the perspective of the Night Watchman who kept watch out over the city. Here's one of our beautiful stickers designed by Violet Light. Cityscape sticker, you can get that on our TikTok shop, you can get it on our website, and very, very soon you'll be able to get it here on YouTube as well. So I'm gonna take you inside here, just give you a quick look, tell you a little bit about what we're gonna do. I love this place, I absolutely love this place. So on Tuesday we start painting. I've ordered new lighting that's gonna go up here, uh, like a wagon wheel lighting. And then over in this corner, so we're gonna have some church pews along this wall here where adults will sit, they can watch, they can get up and participate. We want them to get up and participate. Every adult that comes through here, we want you to participate as well. So over in this corner over here, this is going to be a marsh scene, looking out into the Florida marsh. And so we're actually gonna wrap this wall. Uh, Violet has some great ideas and we're uh, designing a wrap. I don't know if you saw the, the thumbnail. Uh, she actually designed that wrap on my VW bus as well. That's Buddy. So in this corner, you're going to learn to make a cast net. You're going to use a pump drill and a couple of other activities. And then this wall will be wrapped as well. It's going to show you what a Menorcan garden looked like and some of the plants that you would have grown. And then down on this side, this is going to be the area where you do carding of wool and other materials and then you can uh, kind of uh, rub those in your hands and spin them into a thread take that thread home we're going to have a rope making station as well so that will be the other feature there and then 